Guys, so in this video I'm gonna share a well a small story or like a handful of small stories from work that I think could be useful for you to think about when you're dealing with units and money and other sorts of calculations like that. So let's get into it. So what we're gonna cover is why you should always state what the value is and why you should never infer a unit. So a while back, I started. I worked for a company where it was a fairly small product. The company had just started getting some traction in the Swe in Sweden, basically, and so the entire product was oriented around the Swedish market. Now, we had a few types that were associated with calculating prices, and we had products and all this good stuff, right? So. The code that was originally written was written with the mindset that the the money that was being traded on the platform was all in Swedish crowns. So our type for a cost within the system looked like this. It was just an interface that stated that there was an amount and some type of number. Now, the problem with this came when the company actually met some success and all of a sudden we found out, found ourselves having to support more than one type of currency. Now this was the first big mistake that had been made by the original developers because by simply inferring the currency based on the fact that they, the product itself was just running in a specific market and they knew that it was running in Sweden, they uh, knew from with, uh, from outside of the this type that the amount is always going to be, um, or the cost is always going to be in the same currency format. Now, when this changed, or as I like to call it, the context of this code changed all of a sudden, the this idea was no longer true, and this caused a bit of a problem because it left myself and many of my coworkers in the position where we now had to go through, and this took, I think, it took at least two weeks for like a full two week development investment for two teams to do this because the system was fairly significant, where we needed to migrate our databases to add the currency. Well, luckily for us, it was just one currency. So it was fairly painless, but still there was a lot of investment and time lost there. And what was even worse was that all the text everywhere in the entire product was hard coded to say Swedish crowns, which was another problem. So we needed to go and change all of that hard code, all those hard code coded references to that currency format in display text and all that stuff to be a dynamic thing and the thing was like every single function we had such as this example function like get savings was built around exactly this and this will of course not work when we have different types of currencies so what happened was that we changed the implementation ever so slightly i think it's i'm not sure anymore but i think that some of that code is still running and there are still pieces of the system where you, because we didn't have the ability to change the currency format we just have to remember that it's always going to be in that currency form in Swedish crowns so the next iteration became this where all right the we the developers who did this they created a, a enum type for currencies and created a cost with currency type because we still needed to support the old cost system and this is more in line with what i would say you should look at so you have an amount and a currency. It feels fairly straightforward, right? Because now we're being a little bit more explicit about the fact that this is a specific type of currency. And when we then want to calculate the, uh, the savings, as an example, we can actually be certain that there will be a currency as associated with it. And this makes the whole thing a little bit more flexible because now we don't have to have any system logic or hard-coded values that it assumes the currency but there was still a problem with this and the problem was the fact that we once again we had two different types of currencies now why is this a, this a problem well if we have a look at this function here so I have an old cost and a new cost and then I grab the new amount and then I just grab a new currency but what guarantees do I have 
that the old cost and the new cost uses the same type of currency because currency could be one of these two values. Now, the developers who did this, they did, we, they made in, as I told them, I think that we made the same mistake twice, because now we switched from having one to with the assumption being that all oh, right, we just know that we are using Swedish crowns to now switching to saying that, all right, we can have Swedish crowns or euros, but we need to know which context we are in in order to know which one is which. In other words, if we're running the system, in uh, we, we basically need to run two different instances of the system at the same at the same time where we know which market we're dealing with, if it's Sweden or if it's some uh, other country that uses euros. Because otherwise, we might find ourselves in a situation where this sort of calculation will actually create a fairly serious bug where we are applying two different types of currency formats to the same calculation. So another way to solve this would have been that, all right, we will just have to do a check. We will just have to create a bunch of business logic around the fact that a currency can be multiple things and then we will just have to do the conversion which is a big hassle that unfortunately isn't something that you can get around but I want to show you an, a, a system of dealing with that that has worked very well for me uh, up until that point when when I started working for this company and so the idea is very simple where you create a specific type. You have a base, th this is perfectly fine, you have a base type for for a cost with the currency or something rep that represents a cost within the system, but you create a, a, you extend that and create a subclass that actually expresses the the concrete thing that you're dealing with. So if it's a cost in Swedish crowns or if it's a cost in euros or a cost in drachme or whatever, like it doesn't really matter, or in US dollars, you simply have a type that actually express, explicitly states which type of unit that you're dealing with. And then the second thing is that you need to decide which of these currencies are you going to store. Because a second thing that became a bit of an issue, and that's luckily enough we could actually prevent by talking before we implemented it, was what happens if you have more than one currency format within the database at the same time? What if you have some products that are stored with a price in euros and some in Swedish crowns or pounds or whatever? All of a sudden you really you have this uncertainty where you have to do a lot of work as we were saying you have to check which currency and do all the conversions and all of this good stuff which is another headache to deal with which we will we can touch slightly on in in a moment but if uh, at, at least what i suggest if you on the other hand say that all right we'll just store one type of currency and we can, and this way we can always trust that there is only one currency where we need to go from one type of currency to another type of currency. Well, there's a, that's a much simpler solution than if, imagine if you had a scenario where you could have to convert U.S. dollars to Swedish crowns or vice versa, or maybe it's euros to um, to dollars and so forth and so forth. And you can imagine how many permutation combinations that you can get up to if you're just arbitrarily storing any type of currency in an international product. So I highly suggest that you take a look at like this mindset. It doesn't have to be exactly this thing here, but you on all the currencies that are transient, as I like to say, where you might be dealing with people who are dealing with, say, Swedish crowns or dollars or something like that. Well, you can simply latch on a function that knows how to go from that currency to the currency that you're actually going to store. And then you make sure that the only thing that goes in and out of the database is in the same currency formats. And then you're explicit. You try to create a subtype like, a super type, a subtype like this, which just states that, all right, this is a cost with the currency but it's always going to be in euros and that way you can create a function where you, it's now safe to actually assume that the currency is always going to be in the right format. Now slightly further along in my story here the there were a few developers who came and had basically a requirement to implement 
a checkout page where they were going to display a bit a few prices and a few things like that and so what they did was that they took our new fancy cost with currency type and created a an algorithm and a page and a UI and all this good stuff and simply showed the price and so I I raised my finger to them and I said, yes, guys, this is great, but you need to think about something. And that is that you're not really dealing with a cost here. You're dealing with a price. And so they looked at me and they said, Frederick, what do you mean? Isn't that the same thing? No. Well, technically you could argue that it is the same thing, but it's extremely useful for you to think about them as two different things. You don't have to think about it the exact way that I'm stating right now. You could reverse it, but it's very important that you make a difference between the cost of something and the price of something. And the simple reason became very, or this, the, it became very apparent to them once they had all the requirements done from the customer why this was so important because when they implemented the feature they were simply showing a flat price but the second the customer saw this the customer said well legally we actually have to give the user more information when they when they pay and so the developers went what do you mean well, we have like taxes and fees and service charges and blah, 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 and so forth and so forth. All of these different segments or bits that make up the price, basically. That's that was the problem. We the developers had thought in the naive fashion that a price is just a, a sum, right? It's just a value in a unit, and that's the whole thing, right? No, a price is, although that is the thing that is most important to the to the user, for for a lot of legal purposes, it's actually segmented up in make multiple segments that make up that sum. So they came back and they asked Frederick, do you have a suggestion? And I showed them something that has been working fairly well for me in the past as well, which is that you create some, you can create a higher type like this, like an abstract class that is called a price. And then you create a subtype, which is the actual thing that you're trying to express. And then you simply add all of the different segments or properties, if it's optional fees or taxes or whatever, as part of that price. And then you can, of course, add functionality for making a sum out of this if you want to do that or something like that. But by doing this, it becomes very clear and very easy for you as a developer to work with this concept that a price may be a sum of money that you're going to pay, but it also is very important to know that to know what how many what part of the price actually represents what. That is something that becomes extremely important when you're dealing with more serious application development and more serious checkout uh, systems. And then just a few weeks ago, a, a co-worker of mine had an issue which I, I want to end on, which is also just a tip that I want to share. And the issue that he had was very similar to the same issue that I was trying to express about dealing with multiple currencies. So he had been tasked with creating a product page where different, different users or different customers could upload their products and sell them through the platform. Now, the way that it was working was that at this, uh, in this specific scenario, they were selling uh, mobile services. Basically, that was what the system was doing. And so he had created something like this. He created a rate type where there was a cost and a unit. And the reason why there were multiple units was because the customers who came to him said that they were accustomed to expressing different types of rates. So in other words, if the rate was based on, how, okay, how, how many phone calls do you have? Well, then you're gonna pay by how many seconds that you, you actually talk to the other person. Or if the rate was going to be, well, you're going to pay by days or months or something like that. They had different requirements in essence on how they want to represent to their, to their staff what, what the rate is actually going to be. So what he had done was basically the, just this. He had created multiple unit types that represent uh, different segments, such as seconds, days, and months, and so forth, and just added that based on whatever the customer wanted. 
Now, the problem with this came when the team that was responsible for implementing the user-facing part of the application were supposed to actually do all these calculations. Because when each of these customers that were providing these mobile services had had the option of adding either a rate that was based on seconds or days or months, well, then the team that was going to show all of these different options to the user at the same time and just give them an over, the user an overview of how much they're going to save on the different deals, they're going to have to do the same thing as with the, with the currency problem. They're going to have to, and they had to have figure out, all right, am I dealing with, okay, a comparison between two different mobile services where one is in months or the deal is in months or if it's in seconds is it in days is it in seconds days months which which is it right so when we the calculations were made a similar sort of problem as you can imagine occurred as with the currencies we did the the code had to account for the fact that there were multiple in types of units uh, units that had been used. So my coworker came to me and asked if I had any advice. And I said, well, a good rule of thumb when you're dealing with a unit type of any of something like time or megabytes or whatever, like data sizes, stuff like that, is to always use the minimum value that makes sense for that value type. As you probably know, when we're storing timestamps, ideally we want to store that in milliseconds because it's like, well, it's not technically, cor technically correct, but usually that's the, mi the minimum amount of measurement we need in order to accurately estimate, accurately measure time. And we do, and we use that timestamp and then we can calculate based on the, that number that represents the milliseconds what the time actually was at that point. And the same thing is true here. So I said to my coworker, well, this is going to be a bit of work, but if you want to simplify this problem, then you can basically apply the same thing as I have explained with the currency. Simply make sure that like, it's irrelevant what the customer wants to, to see when they're dealing with our system, because if we have the seconds well, if we know the sec, if we store the seconds that the, the rate is based on, we can calculate how many days and how many months we're talking about here. So, for, for to keep our code simpler, it's actually much more efficient for us to create a, a rate type that just always is hard coded to one the minimum type of unit that we we can deal with, and then if there's a bigger representation such as days and months, well will simply do the calculation and show the correct thing to the user. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you're ever in a situation where you're dealing with units and values and prices and things like this, more complicated data types than just simple numbers, try to always be very explicit about what it is that you're actually dealing with. As as I was saying earlier, it's a very good idea to just decide on that you're going to store the representation of what this, uh, this value is to your system, ideally in the minimum format, so that you can always go, because it's, you can always go from something smaller to something larger, but it's really complicated to, in some cases, to go from something larger to something smaller, something more precise, if you don't, if you don't already have that value. So, Try to think about that and also try to think about keeping the conversions between different types of values as simple as possible, such as with currencies. Have one currency that you store in the database so that you always find yourself in a situation where you only have to go from one type of currency to another type of currency instead of being in a situation where you might have to convert between multiple types of currencies. These are just some tips that I hope you find useful in your own work. Have a great day.